I lied, this is the best idea that I've ever had for a video. All right, so I just had either the best idea or the dumbest idea for a project and it involves chicken. That's right, those tasty, delicious treats that you can fry up and eat that are served on Sundays paired along with your favorite football game. And in this case, it's gonna be specifically the Buffalo Bills. And just recently, Travis Kelsey or Jason Kelsey, this one here was just spotted recently wearing a Buffalo wing necklace at a Buffalo Bills game. And that has inspired me to create my own 3D printable chicken wing. Now I did a quick search and I did not see any 3D printable chicken wing files out there. So is this a first? I think it might be. And before we even get started on this goofy project, if you're interested in buying one of those awesome chicken wing necklaces that Jason Kelsey was wearing, those are actually made by the Lucky Wing, which is an upstate New York company that I'll have linked to down below. Hold on, I need something to write on. And I have the perfect tool that I can use. Da, 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 da. Back to the basement we go. So this is really a five step plan. The first being we need to scan our chicken wings. Two, we're gonna model on top of the chicken wing. That's right, we're gonna 3D model on top of that scan. Then three, we're gonna 3D print them. Four, we're gonna clean our prints because I think we're gonna do these in resin for the most detail. And then five, we're gonna get them painted. And the most important part in all of this is that we need to get our hands on some chicken wings and they have to be buffalo wings. These wings look like they're gonna be Perfect for this. And I think one of the most important parts here is trying to figure out what is gonna be the perfect wing to scan. Right off the bat, this one is catching my eye here as having just a lot of unique detail on it that we can go ahead and scan. And then we also need a flat as well. So something like this might work pretty well for us. And then in order to actually scan these, I can't use my hand because it's gonna pick up my hand. So I think I'm gonna use a toothpick here and see if we can find a spot that I can shove this in. That's looking pretty good. And then hopefully I can stick this in some, st oh, perfect. That, that'll that that'll do. Now, when it comes to doing the 3D scanning, there are a bunch of different ways that you can go about doing it. For this, I'm gonna be using the Revo Miraco. This is actually a 3D scanner that I saw over at Rapid TCT earlier this year. And it's basically an all-in-one unit allowing you to do all of your 3D scanning and all of the processing directly on the unit itself. It also has this great touch screen that you can directly interface with. And you can even flip that forward if you wanted to do some front-facing selfie type scanning. But this should be able to provide me with the level of detail that I'm going for with each of these individual 3D scans. The scanner also comes with this motorized turntable with these little dots on top of the surface that should help keep track of the position of the individual scans that we're taking. And once I've finished all of the scanning, I can actually use the Miraco here to one tap edit this and it should clean up all of the 3D models for me so that I can then export it out of this directly over to my computer or my iPad. Now the first thing I'm gonna to do when I'm editing these is use the gizmo tool to reorient them so that they're in the proper position that I'd like them to be when uh, displaying them or just working on them so that they're uh, upright and vertical basically. We can then use the trim tool to come in and trim off any of the other areas of this 3D scan that we no longer need. So here I've just trimmed away some of the areas and now I can use the smooth tool to come in and just refine those clean edges to make that a little less obvious of where those sticks were located. And before I start sculpting on this, I'm gonna actually come in here and turn on the wireframe so that we can see the actual scan data that appears in this. And what I'm gonna do is come in and I'm actually gonna voxel remesh this. I'm gonna change the resolution to maybe, I don't know, 500 and then remesh that. That'll give us a lot more data to play around with here and sculpt on. And what we're specifically gonna be looking at doing is taking some icons and logos and actually bring them directly onto the surface of our chicken wing. And in order to do that, I'm actually gonna go directly into Procreate and show you how I'm gonna take this image here of like the Buffalo Bills logo, drag this directly into Procreate, and then I can make sure that I have my background as black and then I'm gonna desaturate this. So basically all we're looking for is a black and white version of our logo. And then I can come in and proceed to invert this. And once we have that, I can add a little bit of shading to this, a Gaussian blur that's gonna help de-intensify the actual image so that when we bring this back over into Nomad Sculpt, it's gonna be a little bit smoother of a process. 
So I'm gonna do that for a few different images here, but once we have those ready and we come back into Nomad, what we can do is come into our stamps and then up top, we're gonna to come in and select our stamp, our alphas here that we wanna work with. And I'm gonna import in for my photos. And here's the Bills logo that I just brought in. So now what I can do is make sure that symmetry is turned off and now I can start dragging this on here and playing around with actually stamping a Bills logo directly onto our chicken wing and figuring out where exactly we would like to be having those placed all throughout this. You can also play with the intensity as well. So if you wanted to have a little bit more of a raised effect to that, the more you have that intensity added, it's gonna higher, it's actually gonna lift off of the surface of your model. Now, you'll see it's kind of jagged here, and I'm okay with that, because what we can always do is come in and we can actually subdivide this to add a little bit more uh, surface area for us to work with. So here, if I come in and do this again, uh, come into our stamp tool, and now it's a lot cleaner when it comes to actually stamping these into the surface of our chicken wing. So one other issue that you might run into when applying your stamps is if I come in here and apply this Bill's logo, I'm gonna try and apply it here nice and big on the chicken wing, but it's actually piercing through the backside of the model. To fix that, what you're gonna end up doing is going back into your stamp tool and then under the filter menu, you can select front vertices only or front facing vertices only. And then the next time you come in to apply the stamp, it's not going to apply it to the back side. It's, it's only gonna go to the front side of your model. And now that we've got everything stamped, the last thing I wanna do is use the crease tool to just refine some of the details on our scan, just to make sure that everything pops really well. So you'll see here, I'm not going and pressing really hard or anything like that on this. I'm just going over where the existing creases are on our chicken wing scan, just to have those details pop out a little bit further on our 3D prints. And once I finished editing all of the 3D models, it's time for me to actually get them 3D printed. And to do that, I'm gonna print them in the best detail possible. So I'm gonna be using a resin 3D printer, the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra. And Elegoo also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. They are the makers of the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra, which is a fast, affordable resin 3D printer that is extremely easy to get up and running and printing with. There are only a few settings that you have to work with, and it has this tilting vat mechanism that makes it print oh so fast. And Elegoo also has a brand new larger wash and cure station, the Mercury 3, that I'll be using for the very first time with these 3D prints. The best thing about this new wash and cure station is that it's larger, it means it's gonna be able to clean even larger 3D prints, especially coming off of this mid-size Saturn IV Ultra. If you're interested in more information about any of Elegoo's products, you'll find links to those down below. All right, two hours and 45 minutes later, these chicken wing prints have finished, this is so cool. As you can see, I went with a beige resin here. So I figured this might be the easiest for me to try and tint or paint to get the full chicken wing effect. Yeah, these are gonna look really good once we get them all cleaned up. All right, let's pop these off the build plate. Oh. wings to the fryer here. This is so much more powerful than the older wash stations here. This is seriously moving that isopropyl alcohol around. Ta -da. These should be all nicely clean, so I need to transfer them to a paper towel and let them air dry before I can start the curing process. Look at that. Looks like I have a whole bucket of chicken wings that I've fried. And once the wings have fully air dried, I can then swap out that IPA tank with the actual turntable and then place these under the UV light to fully cure. And I have to say, I am loving the results that I'm seeing so far with these resin 3D printed chicken wings. The detail is looking nice and crispy off of these and the raised surface from all those little emblems came out really nicely here using that stamp function and Nomad Sculpt. Now I think the trickiest part for me is gonna be actually getting these 
colored correctly so that they actually look like chicken wings and not raw chicken. So to do that, I've got a handful of different paints that I can work with here, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm gonna go about this, but I think what I might end up doing is doing a mixing of brushing and airbrushing to get the end result that I'm looking for. So I think I'm gonna start with some of this earth shade to give it a little bit of a wash to help hopefully help highlight some of the crevices throughout this print here. And after applying the wash, I'm just using a paper towel to sort of pat it dry. I'm not trying to wipe away all. This will really help differentiate some of the, the colors and highlight the depth of the piece here. Take a look at this color here. Tell me that doesn't look exactly like the color of buffalo wing sauce. You also don't need a lot of paint, just a very thin coating to get the effect that we're going for. And then once we dry it off, we should be able to apply a few more layers of varying colors to give it that authentic buffalo wing look. And there's no way that I was gonna pass up the opportunity of taking our 3D printed chicken wings and coating them in some actual Frank's hot sauce. Now I experimented with a lot of different varieties of painting, everything from painting them too dark and almost looking barbecue-y to actually dipping them in that actual buffalo wing sauce. Once all the buffalo sauce dries, it leaves it with this really funky, cool texture to it. Also to give all these wings a glossy look, I used this gloss varnish that I then mixed into my airbrush with some thinner and sprayed that over all of these wings to give them that glossy, wet appearance. However, it was a little bit harder for those to go onto the ones that I actually dunked in the buffalo sauce. This could potentially be a really amazing option, but you're gonna have to wait about 24 hours for that buffalo sauce to fully dry. But in the end, I ended up finding a rather simple solution for getting these to look as close to buffalo wings as I possibly could with that orangish reddish tint. And that was by applying multiple coats of this really thin shade Cassandora yellow paint. This gave it the perfect look to these wings here where they're not too dark in some sections, but in the recesses, I was able to apply a little bit more, quickly dry them out with a hair dryer, and then apply more coats to these wings. And here you can even see where I experimented playing with more browns and black paints like I did previously in these, and I honestly think the ones without that turned out even better. What was really fun about this project are the varying results that you're gonna get by applying different paints to each of your chicken wings. And obviously being able to go in and stamp these with things like the Buffalo Bills, number 17 for Josh Allen, and then we've even got things like broken tables that I modeled into that, or like Mafia there for the Bills Mafia. Now I did wanna say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making goofy content like this here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like the resin 3D printer settings that I used for these 3D prints, you'll find those over in my Patreon. But let me know what you think about resin 3D printing chicken wings. If you're interested in printing some for yourself, I'll have links to the files that I have created shared below that you can go and download and print for yourself. This is just a goofy, fun project. And I'm honestly kind of impressed with the results that I was able to achieve by just tinting these with a little bit of paint. Hey, thanks so much for watching all, and I'll see you next time. Go Bills. Honestly, this was just an excuse for me to buy a bunch of chicken wings and eat them by myself. So good.